Hi, I'm Judy Novak, an author of the SANS Intrusion Detection In-Depth course. This is also known as SEC 503 or SANS Security 503. I'd like to introduce you to the types of hands-on exercises performed in the course, and I'll do so by demonstrating a representative example of traffic analysis. We feel it's really important to give you a sufficient number of challenging and relevant hands-on exercises since that's the best way to periodically reinforce what you've learned. You'll find at least three and as many as six exercises per day lasting from 20 to 50 minutes on each of the five teaching days. And day six is pretty much one long group exercise of investigating an intrusion. We treat, teach many different traffic analysis tools in the course, yet TCP dump, Wireshark, Snort, Silk, and Bro are emphasized most. You're probably familiar with the first three, although Silk and Bro may not be as familiar to you. Silk's an open source tool that records network flow data in compact format so that long-term retention is more viable. And Bro is most accurately described as a framework for network traffic analysis. It has the capability to alert about noteworthy traffic using a powerful scripting language. Also, it retains data about connections and protocols for retrospective analysis, and we'll see this in the demonstration. The exercise scenario is as follows. Suppose you're running the suite of tools that I just mentioned on your network. Bro alerts on a large SMTP MIME attachment because someone wrote a Bro script to examine SMTP for a threshold number of bytes, possibly for signs of exfiltration. To simulate this, I'll run a libpcat format file containing the network traffic recorded during the time of the alert. And just so that you know, I've prepared some scripts to run the tools just so that you don't have to witness and endure my painfully bad typing skills. Also, I'm going to do this in two parts just so that it won't be too long. So I'm going to come over to the desktop here and as you see I've got, I'm in a directory called bro-run. I'm going to run a bro script and when you run bro it will create some log files and it does so in the current working directory so I want to keep those log files separate from everything else. This is my script to run bro. So we just execute the bro command and we're going to read the demo.pcap which has all the traffic from the incident that we're interested in. And we're going to run a bro script called smtp long mime.bro. Now I'm not going to show you the script because to try to describe bro in a short amount of time will do a disservice to bro and you as well. We go over bro scripting in class. So let me go ahead and run this. And you see some output, and this is output from that script that was written for the large MIME attachments. Warning, unusually large MIME content length from 192.168.11.23 to 184.168.221.63, port 25, and the length is 1.85 megs. All right, that's the length of the MIME attachment. Now, as I mentioned, there's a bunch of different log files and you can see con.log, dns.log, and so forth. Let's just take a look at this con.log. And what you see is it's not very readable. The line's wrapped and it's long and confusing, but I want you to take note of a couple things. First of all, here are fields, and these fields are the names of the variables that you have to reference to get the values below them, and the values below them are uh, all these lines as you see below. Um, but there's a way to display those so they aren't as confusing. There's a command called bro cut, very similar to the Unix or Linux command cut, if you're familiar with that. And what we do is we're going to pipe con.log into bro cut. The minus D gives a readable time stamp. And what we're going to look at is this is the source IP, the source port, destination IP, destination port, and the number of bytes uh, in the entire stream from the sender. Okay, so we see here that we've got a bunch of IP addresses and here is the particular connection that we're interested in. All right, 
And you see that the total number of bytes is a bit more than we saw before. And again, that's because this represents the entire stream and not just the MIME attachment. All right, so that's it for Bro for now. Let's go back up, and I have a script that will look for exfiltration using Silk. Silk, again, is network uh, flow. It's, Silk is an open source version of it, and there are several commands associated with the Silk. The one I'm using here is rwstats, and I'm going to read into it a Silk formatted file. Silk formats are different than PCAP formats, and there's a utility that will convert PCAP file format to Silk file format, and I did that before I started the demonstration. What we want from the rwstats command is give me the top five ten, I'm sorry, the top five byte counts of flows, and then when you show the flow, those top five flows, or byte counts and flows, show the source IP, source port, destination IP, and destination port. And what we see is 192.168.11.23 going to 184.168.221.63 destination port 20, uh, 25 SMTP and we've got a large number of bytes. Now we have pretty much assumed or concluded that there is exfiltration. At this point it really helps to look at the content or payload to see if we can discover what the exfiltration is. And when we're talking content or payload, we are typically talking about Wireshark. So let's take a look at this PCAP and Wireshark. Our interest now is SMTP. This is going to show all the SMTP traffic, and we apply that, and we've got all only SMTP traffic. So this is really helpful for us. And let's try to isolate this and take a look at the TCP stream. All right, so this is the SMTP headers and here is the MIME attachment and you can see it's very long and not exactly readable and that's because it's base64 encoded. So we can't read it just yet. There's base64 decoding and that's what we'll have to do in order to be able to read that. So to, to do so we're going to save as we're going to save the entire stream and edit it later. So let's just save this as temp stream. And also notice before I save it that it's done in raw format. All right. So we've got that. Let's just close this up and go to a different window here. So we should have, and we do. Now I'm going to use gedit, and I'll tell you why in just a minute. So here's the entire session from gedit. Let's get rid of the headers because we don't need those. And still have a line there. Okay, and go all the way to the bottom and get rid of anything after the base64 encoded traffic, and that's the rest of this. All right, so we should be left with just base64 encoded traffic. The problem is, somewhere along the line, we introduced Windows line endings, and those are very different from Linux line endings. So we need to get rid of those. And the way we're going to do that is save this as, let's call it stream2. And we come down here, and the line ending of Unix or Linux is going to be selected. All right. So we've got that. Let's get out of here. We're back in temp, and we should have stream 2. And so what we're going to do is use the base 64 decoding minus D stream 2. And for now, I'm just going to pipe it to more. We could have piped it to a, an output file, but we're just interested in looking at some records here. And what you see is it's definitely been decoded. We find that we have what is supposed to simulate user data, user names, social security numbers, mailing addresses, and, and so forth. And there's several of them. We only see eight here, but there are many in this particular file. 
So now we know that we've got exfiltration of user data, and that's not a good thing. And we'll stop for now and continue just in, uh, in the next feature of this and show you how the exfiltration occurred and why it occurred.